As you all know by now, e-commerce exploded last year. Consumers shopped online in big numbers, especially when they avoided stores or couldn't find what they were looking for on the shelves. But now that we're slowly entering normalcy and what will hopefully be post-pandemic, the question is, what will e-commerce look like now? Before I answer that, let me give you a quick refresher on what we saw in e-commerce last year. In 2020, growth spiked up to 32% in the US. That was the highest growth in at least two decades. We also estimate that the pandemic fuels an additional $100 billion to the US e-commerce market and accelerated online retail by two years. In other words, it was a big year for e-commerce. And it wasn't much different in the rest of the world. Globally, online sales crossed $4.2 trillion and grew 24% year over year. That jump was above an 18% increase in 2019. In both the US and worldwide, approximately 20% of retail purchases occurred online last year, which was record penetration for both. But in North America, growth was concentrated at the top. Our analysis of the top 2000 North American online retailers shows that consumers definitely turned to retailers they knew. The top 500, which comprises retail giants like Amazon, Walmart, Target, Best Buy, and others, collectively grew above the overall market at 45%. That's because those same giants grew double, sometimes triple above the market growth, lifting the full top 500. The second 500, which includes retailers with online sales between 30 million and 100 million, grew above the market at 24 or below the market at 24%. And smaller retailers whose on, annual online sales range between 1 million and 30 million and are grouped in what we call the next 1,000 grew even slower at 20%. Still, that 20% growth is higher than the 14% growth in the market in 2019, so it's nothing to sneeze at. But it's certainly no noteworthy that in many cases, the big got much bigger last year. And the top categories last year showed no surprises. Food retailers grew the most as customers avoided grocery shopping in stores and purchased groceries online, often for the very first time. Hobbies and sporting goods retailers saw online sales increase as we all scrambled to stay active and more importantly, not bored. And hardware and housewares merchants were popular because shoppers spent money sprucing up their homes. All right, enough about 2020. Now what's going on this year? Earlier this week, the Commerce Department reported that online sales jumped 39% in the first quarter. That's nearly triple the 14% growth in Q1 last year and even above the 32% growth of, in all of 2020. As a reminder, the pandemic didn't hit the US until the very tail end of the first quarter last year. So it was expected growth would be pretty high. In fact, before the numbers were released, a few of us on the research team um, placed bets on what growth would be. And not to brag, but I guessed it would be in the high 30s. So I wasn't that shocked with the numbers. But what did surprise us was that total retail sales grew 13% in Q1. And offline sales, which are mainly sales that occur in stores, grew 8%. That means shoppers spent money across all channels at the beginning of 2021. And digital sales accounted for 19.5% of total retail sales, in line with e-commerce penetration last year. Now let's put all of these numbers into some context. What's telling about growth in the, this recent quarter is that it's the second highest increase in a quarter during the pandemic, only trailing the 44% growth during Q2 last year, which was the height of store closures and lockdowns. In other words, Q1 2021 grew faster than the third and fourth quarters of 2020. And total retail sales haven't grown this much in literally decades. I mean, since 1993. We spent time analyzing these figures and based on the analysis, we believe these factors likely contributed to the gr high growths. For one, COVID cases spiked nationwide in January following the holidays. This means that at least for the first part of the quarter, some consumers were still avoiding stores and purchasing more online than they normally do, and especially more than pre-pandemic levels. 
Second, consumers were armed with another round of stimulus checks and tax returns, so many had more cash to spend than usual. And lastly, as things are opening up and people feel more comfortable to travel again, it means consumers are shopping in categories they weren't going near last year, like luggage, makeup, vacation, outfits, formal wear, and even office wear. I think we're all starting to accept that we're gonna have to change out of these sweatpants soon. All this to say, just because things like indoor restaurant dining and travel have opened up again, doesn't mean consumers aren't spending money on products too. And we're seeing strong growth among big retailers as well. Several retailers reported earnings in the last week or so with high Q1 growth. Amazon had yet another quarter with 40% growth. We're talking about a retailer that generates $300 billion, so its consistent increases are remarkable. It's important to note though that Amazon, Walmart, Target, and Target all operate their own marketplaces. So their growth, and especially Amazon's growth, is fueled by all the mid-sized mer merchants that sell on their sites. In fact, in Q1, marketplace merchants accounted for 55% of units sold on Amazon. That's up from 52% in 2020 and 44% in 2015. For many retail chains like Target, Walmart, and Home Depot, Q1 ends a month later than the calendar quarter. That means this quarter's growth compares to last Q1 that included a month and a half of the start of the pandemic. That distinction is important when al analyzing these growth rates. So Home Depot, for example, whose 27% growth may seem low, that's on top of an 80% growth in Q1 last year. And Target's 50% is on top of a 140% growth in Q1 last year. This tells me it's very likely these retailers acquired new loyal and permanent digital customers in the past year. And that's probably true for many other mid-sized retailers too. New customers acquired last year won't just be pandemic buyers for a lot of merchants, which is great news. What's also noteworthy of these retail chains is stores played a key role in their digital growth. Take Target, for instance. In the first quarter, the retailer said 75% of digital orders were either picked up in store, curbside, or shipped from a store. Just curbside pickup accounted for 30% of Target's digital sales in Q1, up from 2% in 2019. Similarly, Home Depot reported that 55% of online orders were fulfilled through a store. This keeps margins low and profits high for e-commerce orders that typically put a strain on retailers because of shipping costs. And on this slide, you're seeing all these omni-channel services and how they grew exponentially in the last year. Looking at curbside especially, only 8% of the top 500 retailers with stores offered curbside in early 2020, pre-pandemic. And now more than half allow consumers to pick up products curbside. And this growth in omni-channel features may also have contributed to the jump in store sales. For example, Consumers who are picking up an item in store may be tempted to make additional purchases while browsing aisles. And now onto the fastest growing categories in Q1. This is data our team just finished crunching yesterday, so it's super hot off the press. We, are, we were excited to see if purchase habits began changing in Q1. So far, we only note a couple of shifts among fast growing categories. Food still tops the list, um, and sporting goods and toy retailers continue to grow fast. Housewares jumped up to the third spot, possibly because the housing mar market has been going off for the last year, and now consumers are furnishing new homes. Flowers and gifts also jumped up, but it's most likely because they typically have a strong Q1, with big holidays like Valentine's Day in the quarter, and this quarter's growth compares to a pre-pandemic Q1 last year, therefore resulting in a higher increase. In turning our attention to marketplaces, we estimate the 50 top US marketplaces grew gross merchandise value 43% in Q1, driven by Amazon and Walmart's growth. eBay grew GMV 27%, and Etsy, which has been growing super fast since the pandemic started, grew another 132% in Q1. 
this is on pace to be yet another strong year for marketplaces, a reason many retailers are beginning to operate their own by inviting outside merchants to sell on their own e-commerce sites. And finally, based on the first quarter's performance and historical trends, we project e-commerce will grow 25.1% this year. It's lower than the 2020 growth, but still higher than any growth since 2007. And based on our analysis, total retail sales will grow 7% and online sales will account for 22% in the US. And that's all for me.